Okay, so today we're going to uh, continue working with Jump and actually start looking at some visualization that you can do with Jump. But first of all, we need to download the file, right, that we started working on in the previous class. So go to Scholar, y'all, okay? And uh, in the Scholar, I created a folder, Jump Files, right there. And the only thing that you find there right now is the file that we started in the previous class. <coughs> Remember, we started entering things into the uh, like data about the weather, right? So uh, go ahead and click it. It will download the file onto your computer. And the file is very small, actually. It's less than a kilobyte. So when the file downloads, just double click the file, and it will open up with jump. So that's what you're supposed to see. Is everybody good? You open the file, right? No problem. Thing that I wanted to mention, uh, this semester we're going to work with Jump a lot. Okay? Big data, well, we're not going to look at big data per se, we're going to look at small data. But for the methods that we will use, even small data, you can't really do it manually. Any models that you will construct, you will need the software, okay? How many of you have PCs, laptops? With Windows. Good. How many of you have Apple? Yeah, okay. How many of you do not have Apple or a PC laptop? So everybody has their own computer, right? Okay. What I will do is uh, I will share the folder with you that will contain installations, okay? So because you're seeing you students, uh, we have an agreement with Jump company that uh, we install, uh, bless you, we install jump programs on all computers in the labs, plus, uh, because you're studying at CNU, you uh, can download and install jump on your machine at no cost for you, so therefore I'm going to share a folder, it's going to be a Google folder, okay? And uh, there will be four files, I believe. One file is going to be the uh, installation package for PCs, another installation package for Macs, and there's going to be two PDF files that will pretty much explain to you steps, okay? But uh, what I was told by the IT is right now they're working to create actually a self-installing package. In other words, you pretty much don't have to do anything, but, you know, double click and it will install and register the software for you, okay? So they're working on that right now. I don't know when they're going to be done, but uh, at some point in time I will share that with you. And it's going to be become handy actually for you because you know uh, you will have access to examples, data, you will work on projects on your own time at the dorm, you know, using your own computer. You don't have to necessarily come to the computer lab, okay? All right, uh, any questions, concerns, complaints, sarcastic comments before we begin? All right, so here is what we did in the previous class, correct? We started to enter the data into jump. We started to create the uh, jump file. Okay, uh, and that's the weather data uh, that has several columns. A column in, in a file is a variable, right? Every time when we say predictor variable or a target variable, we mean a column in the file. That's what it is, okay? And every record in the file corresponds to, um, where is the mouse? I can't see that. All right, every record in the file corresponds to just one uh, data point, okay? One day in this case. What happened on this day? What was the temperature? What was the day of the week? Was it rainy? Was it sunny? So one specific occasion, right? Okay, so uh, let's switch back to jump. Uh, we have first column day, right? Day of the week. And we label that as what type of data? Ordinal, Ordinal right? Why, because these are categories, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. these are categories, but they're kind of ordered. So therefore, we label that as ordin uh, ordinal data. Next two columns, temperature high, temperature low. What do you think the data type should be? Ordinal? Nominal? Nominal? Numerical. Numerical, right? These are numbers, measured in degrees Fahrenheit, right? We don't label them, it is, that's, that's what the thermometer says, basically, right? That's a number. So temperature high and temperature low should be continuous. And then sun and rain, what do you think uh, we, should, we should do with these things? Every one of them is zero, one. Zero if it's mostly, what, uh, mostly not sunny, one if it's mostly sunny. 
nominal, right? Zero, one, nominal date. It's not numerical. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go back to jump, if I will find a way to. Hold on. Yep, here's the mouse. There you go. So I'm going to create a new column, right? So go ahead and double click on the next column. It says column two. Double click that. And we're going to rename this, right? Temp underscore high, temp underscore low. Temp. Oops. Temp underscore high. And I'm going to say it's numeric. And the modeling type continues, right? So uh, that's all right. Next one, I'm going to create temperature low. So go ahead and click on the uh, third column, and then right click column info, and that's going to be temp underscore low. And again, numerical continues. That's how it's supposed to be. Then create the column number four. Right click column info, and what was that rain? How was the column? Sun and then rain. Okay. Sun, S U N. And I am going to keep it numeric because it's 0, 1, right? But the modeling type is going to be nominal for me, right? Because these are not really numbers, they're just labels, sort of, that I assign to different categories. And note that as I go through this exercise, uh, in this section on the left side of jump, I'm getting new entries, right? I create a new column, it shows up in the list of columns. Right now it says 4 slash 1. What do you think slash 1 means? I have four columns and one of them is selected, highlighted. Right? It basically tells you what you have uh, highlighted. Okay, and another one, the last one, I'm going to create column 5, right click column info, it's going to be rain, right? The name is rain. Uh, I'm going to keep zeros and ones, but the modeling time is really nominal, correct? Yeah. Zero, one are not really numbers. Okay, good. All right, and now let's just go ahead and enter the data that we have. Okay, I'm going to make it uh, smaller. Let's see, so that I have simultaneously both things. Here is my data, and here is my... PowerPoint where all information is located so I can see them both together just like that. Okay, so on uh, day number one, that is zero and zero stands for what? Sunday, right? Actually, it's probably easier just to go ahead and enter the, um, the numbers in the column, right? So I have 50, 59, 55, that's temperature high, right? 52, 57, 54, and 57. Okay, cool. So I have my column right there. And temperature low, I have 45, 45, 52, 48, 46, 48, and 48. Okay. Now, for the sun and rain, I'm going to enter numbers right now. But later I will create labels, right? And I will be able to switch between labels. What 1 stands for and what 0 stands for, okay? So uh, what do I have? 0 mostly not sunny and 1 mostly sunny. Same thing for the rain, right? So mostly not sunny. That means 0, right? And the first one I have to enter 0. And the next day it's 1. And then 0, 0, 0, 0. And last one is 1, right? Mostly sunny was on Saturday. And same thing for the rain, right? Mostly rainy is 1, mostly not rainy is 0, okay? So on Sunday it was mostly rainy, so what do I put? 1, one right? Then mostly not rainy, 0, and then rainy again, and the rest of the week not rainy. That means the rest of them are zeros, right? Okay, so that's my data right there, okay? Now, uh, let's uh, label these two columns, sun and rain, okay? Because right now there is zeros and ones, but we know these are categories, and I can switch between showing numbers versus showing what these numbers mean, really, right? Remember how we did it in the previous class? We signed value labels, right? Value zero means label mostly not sunny and mostly not rainy. So what I have to do is right-click on the column that I plan to 
uh, assign the daily labels and go again to column info, right? And here is my sun column and numerical data, but it's really modeled as nominal. And in the column properties, I select value labels. That's what we did at the end of the previous class, okay? So really I have two different values. Zero means mostly, what, not sunny, correct? Yeah, so in the label I say mostly not, I'm gonna emphasize not sunny, add, and one means mostly sunny. Okay, and then I add that. And if I keep use value labels check mark selected, that means that instead of zeros and ones, it's going to display for me the descriptions, right, that I just created. So when I click OK, there it is. So it's not zero, one, it's, it's the actual description. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the last column, rain. So right click on the column, go to the column info, and in the column properties, let's define value labels. Same thing, right? Zero stands for mostly not rainy. Not rainy. And add the second one. The value of one stands for mostly rainy. And then I add that, okay? So I have two different values with corresponding labels. And again, check mark right here. When I click OK, it shows me instead of zeros and ones the labels. Any questions? Anybody is behind? Something not clear? We're good? Yay. All right, so I'm going to save it and then later upload to the, to the scholar, okay? So that's how you enter the data, pretty much. And also note that uh, we have started with the uh, variable day, and we said this is an ordinal variable, right? Categories, but they're ordered. And we also discussed at the end of the previous class that by the, uh, uh, the uh, depending on what data type you're dealing with, jump assigns the icon, right? So that you can visually see uh, what is that, okay? So uh, ordinal data, has these green bars. Now, temperature high and temperature low we discussed, it, it was numerical or continuous data, so you have blue triangle kind of thing, right? And if the variable is nominal, it's red bars. Okay, so by looking at uh, the icon, you can pretty much tell what it is. Uh, and uh, what I told you also is, if you click on this icon, right, it shows you the options. So you can actually change the type of the variable um, to whatever you like, right? Now, whether or not it makes sense, that's an entirely different question, but you, right now our choices are between continuous, ordinal, nominal, and none. None basically means that that's just weird, we can't really assign, right, any, any data type. Well, uh, truth is there is more than just four, and in, in the example that we're going to look at in a minute, you will see precisely what, what I mean. Uh, there can be uh, unstructured text, Okay. There can be multiple values recorded. And uh, the reason why it's not showing really is because, you know, uh, like if you have multiple values, we'll see exactly what that means. There is not an easy or natural way to do any type of analytics. If you, in one cell you have multiple values separated by comma from each other, okay? What can you do with this? Uh, not much, all right? So uh, these are basic data types that Jump is dealing with, okay? Continuous data for numerical, uh, for, for numbers. Uh, and if you, you're dealing with categories, that's ordinal or nominal, okay? All right, so now what I want to do is uh, show you some graphical capabilities, okay? So we're going to start doing visualization in Jump. Visualization, humans are visual animals, right? Because you can take a look at the table and uh, not necessarily get what's going on. Let me show you an example, actually, right from my slide that I posted, okay? And in the slides, by the way, I have this explanation of what, uh, what the window looks like. We pretty much saw uh, the, the window of jump, right? So, uh, hold on, yeah, here, okay? That's an example that we're going to look at later during the semester when we will talk about the um, 
oh god, uh, regression, multiple regression. Okay, but uh, this is the data uh, data set that contains four pairs of variables x and y. So there is x1, y1, x2 goes with y2, x3 goes with y3, etc. Okay, uh, if you look at these things, can I make it bigger? Hold on. Yeah, I can. If you look at these values, for example, let's let's take a look at x1, y1. Uh, do we see anything particular, specific, like any pattern, anything that you can easily identify by looking at these numbers x1 and y1? Probably. Uh huh. Go ahead. Yeah, true. Why is, why is there decimals, right? But uh, is, is there anything that basically strikes like x goes up, y goes up, or x goes down, y goes down, or maybe there is a curvature? If, you, if I plot x against y, it's really hard to say, right? Because it's just a bunch of numbers and you have to make a mental effort to represent these things, right? So in this case, what we need to do basically is to plot the picture and just see what goes on, okay? In fact, this is a pretty famous example. Like I said, we're going to cover that probably a month from today, I'm guessing, okay? Uh, it's called Anscombe Quartet. Quartet because there are four pairs, X and Y, uh, right? And uh, that uh, data set actually was published by the uh, British statistician. His name was Anscombe, hence it's called Anscombe Quartet. Okay, and his point basically was that uh, before you start cranking numbers out of data, you have to look at the data visually because that can can tell you a lot. Like uh, Yoga, Yogi Berra was telling, you can say the whole lot by just simply looking, right? So, hence visualization, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's do the visualization. And visualization means what? It means that we have to put a picture on the data, right? So, uh, construct graphs uh, and possibly put the graphs together in, in one place, on one page, and that is called something that's called dashboard. So, let's take a look at what Jump can do for us in this regard. So, this week we're going to look at Jump today, and on Friday we're going to look at what Jump can do, okay? Uh, and uh, next week uh, we will start uh, using a specifically visualization software, specifically visualization package. One of the most popular packages for the visualization these days is called Tableau. Tableau is California-based company. It's a relatively uh, young company. I believe it was established several years ago. Uh, and uh, their software, although it's by any measure not cheap, okay, it's used by a lot of companies. And that's pretty much the only thing that this uh, software does, visualization. Jump not exactly a visualization package. Jump, actually, what's good about Jump is it has a lot of different uh, things, different tools combined together. You can do traditional statistics with Jump, what you learned in BUSN 231. You can do the hypothesis testing, confidence interval, non-parametric test. You can find out all these mean mode, median, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, quartiles, per percentiles, etc. Right? That's traditional statistics. Then it can do the visualization, which we're about to start looking at, and it also can do the advanced statistics, what we're actually uh, learning in this class. So machine learning techniques, classification, logistic regression, neural networks, clustering analysis, something that goes outside of the traditional statistic, as you learned in BUS Center 31. Okay, so I'm going to close out this file all right, weather, we're done with the file, so now you know how the data are entered, right? If you pretty much open the blank file and start just typing the data, okay? Uh, and I'm going to close that one. What's good about Jump is it provides you with a lot of data sets that were pre-built already for us to use and look at, okay? So how to find these data sets? Very easy. Uh, go to the help on the top, okay? And in the help menu, there is an option that says sample data library, right? When you click sample data library, it will open up a, a Windows Explorer for you. Everybody found it? <coughs> Ellie? You found it? Yeah, go to help, sample data library, and it will open for you. That's the storage on your computer. That's the folder that was created when the program was installed on this machine, okay? 
And you can see that uh, Jump provides us with a whole lot of different data files, right? So let's use uh, this one. It's called, I believe, Big Class Families. So uh, go ahead and find, starts with B. It's all alphabetically arranged, right? Do you see the Big Class Families file? Dot jump. Yeah, double click that one and it will open up for you, okay? So uh, it's the uh, data set that has how many records, how many data points, tell me. 40, right? And it's right there at the bottom. Rows, right? Every row, like we discussed today already, is one data point, right? One uh, entry, one instance, right, of, of the data. And uh, here are my variables, right? You can see that uh, some variables don't look anything like what we learned. We learned only three types of variables, right? Continuous, nominal, ordinal. What do you see in the very first one? Picture. Imagine that, right? So apparently we can insert picture in the jump. And right there, uh, the first column that's listed picture, what's data type, it says none. So we couldn't identify any meaningful data type, but we inserted some images and said, oh, that's just for fun, right? Can be pictures, actual pictures of people, obviously, right? So here are some icons. Well, then uh, there is a name. How name is uh, classified? What type of data is that? Hmm? Nominal. nominal? Yep, nominal. It's a, it's a uh, red, red bars, right? Then age. Age is classified as ordinal, right? That's a little weird. Agree? Because age should, be in, should have been what? Continuous, really. It's a number, right? There is no, I mean, there is nothing uncertain about age. It's measured in terms of years. Right? I can't randomly assign the age to a person. It's how many years you live, right? And then uh, sex, that's obviously male, female, right? So that's uh, nominal, right? Height and weight, continuous, right? Then uh, sibling ages. Let's take a look at this column, sibling ages. Some uh, records are empty. What does that mean? You don't have any siblings. You don't have any siblings. But if you do, it can be one number, it can be two numbers. In some extreme cases, it can be three numbers, right? Maybe, no, that's it. In some extreme case, again, between numbers. And they're all comma separated, right? So, uh, and you can see that the data type assigned to this specific column is kind of weird, right? What is it? Let's click on the icon and see. It says that it's multiple responses, which makes sense, right? Siblings aged one and five. So two values comma separated, okay? But that's not something that we would use directly in the, in the modeling. That's just a column that contains the whole bunch of data. And then you can see sports. Some people played only one sport, some people played more than one, also values comma separated. Then countries visited, same thing, right? Can be empty, can be one value, can be multiple, okay? And the last two, uh, reported illnesses. Reported illnesses are unstructured text. Unstructured, remember we discussed that uh, data can be structured or unstructured, right? Structured, the examples of structured data are age, weight, height, right? It's one uh, value per record, so height is this many inches, weight is this many pounds, and that's it, okay? But uh, illnesses, if you look at the column with illnesses, um, can be very descriptive, right? Occasional headache, uh, headaches uh, and colds. Or it can be really down to the point, right? Allergic uh, rhinitis, whatever that might be, okay? Or headache, simple as that, or nothing, okay? So unstructured text means that typically it's comments that left behind can be descriptive, can be very uh, down to the point and concise, but there is no predefined structure. People can type whatever, right? And then there is vector. That one, let's not even get into that because I have no idea what they entered in this field, okay? All right. Uh, so let's start with uh, making simple charts, okay? Now, when it comes to making simple charts, we don't have a lot of flexibility because we live in three-dimensional world, right? But we're looking at the two-dimensional screen, okay? So uh, what can we do with two-dimensional screen? Not a lot, I got to tell you, not a lot, okay? Uh, one thing that we can do is plot one variable at a time. That's something that we're going to call a univariate plot, okay? Univariate plot is when, you, when you're plotting one variable at a time and you're looking at the distribution of this variable, okay? Uh, it can be a bivariate plot. So you have horizontal x axis, vertical y axis. You plot x horizontally, you plot y vertically, like weight and height, for example. And you get 
two variables at a time. You can look at two variables simultaneously, right? Together. So that is called bivariate plot. Technically, we can create a, well, trivariate plot. So three-dimensional, we can have X, Y, and Z. But is it going to be very uh, useful for us looking at, at the three-dimensional plot on a two-dimensional screen? Probably not, right? So most of the time what we're looking at is at most bivariate plots. But let's start with univariate. So one variable at a time. To plot one variable distribution at a time is really simple in jump, okay? Uh, so there is a button right there on the top that has these horizontal bars. It says distribution. Same option you can find if you go to the menu analyze and that's going to be at the very top of the analyze menu. Distribution, same thing, right? So this button on the top of the jump window is essentially is a shortcut, right? Same thing. So let's go ahead and click that one. All right. Um, I can plot multiple distributions simultaneously or one at a time, doesn't matter. So let, let me show you multiple uh, variables simultaneously, okay? So I'm going to plot age and then how do you select many things? Control, control right? Control down. And I'm going to plot uh, sex, height, and weight. These four things. Okay. Now I have to click the Y column button so that I add them to the list of the variables that I want to plot. Okay. And simple as that, I'm going to click the OK button. There it is for me. All right. Distribution of things. Now, uh, by default, Jump shows you the distributions kind of side by side. Uh, do you, uh, do you, did you notice that they're kind of vertical instead of horizontal, right? The reason for, for that is probably, well, not probably, I asked them, why do you do that? They said, uh, you know, if you put distribution side by side, you can pack more of them on one screen. So they, they did it for the purpose of, you know, packing the screen with information for you. So it looks a little bit like books in the library, right? You put them vertically instead of stacking them one on the top of another. But we're not used to this very much, right? So therefore, we, you can turn uh, the distribution uh, around, and that's very easy. A lot of things that we're going to be doing with Jump are hidden inside the hidden menus, okay? And hidden menus are in the red triangle. We're going to use that a lot, and you will get used to that pretty soon, okay? So go ahead and click on the red triangle that says distribution, all right? Do you see the second option from the top that says stack? If you choose stack, it will turn them 90 degrees, all the distributions, and put them one on the top of another, right? So that's basically staking. Now, let me point out a couple of things. First of all, uh, age. Do you remember uh, what type of variable was age? Ordinal. Ordinal, right? So it's categorical, really. And remember we discussed in the previous class that with categorical variable, you, you don't do much with this, right? Just like with ordinal, uh, with nominal variable, right? You can't compute the mean, you can't compute the uh, mode, no standard deviation, no coefficient of variability, no percentiles, nothing quite like that, right? So the only thing that you can do is list the, the categories and how many observations in each category and percentages. That's precisely what happens here. Do you see that? It created the tabular summary for me. So this is the chart. And from the chart, what can I say graphically, visually? That the most popular age is what? 14, right there, okay? And it says that out of 40 total observations, 14, there are 12 people aged 14, right? So uh, note that there, are, there is nothing else, right? Mean standard deviations, nothing quite like this. So it's just list of categories and counts and percentages. Sex was the same, right? It was nominal variable, right? So there is no mean, no standard deviation. It's just listing of uh, values and count and percentage of counts. So we have females, which one is, uh, well, a little bit dominant males. categories? Males, right? Because there is slight imbalance, right? 22 males versus 18 females, right? For a total count of 22. Now, height and weight, if you remember, they were continuous variables, right? Numerical. That means that we can compute everything and anything that we want about these variables. And you can see that, right? First of all, there is a default summary statistics that you get. You get mean, standard deviations, standard error, whatever that means, right? Uh, upper 95% and lower 95%. If you would have to guess, what does that represent? Upper 95% and lower 95%, what is that? 
That's from your statistics class that you took long, long, well, not so long time ago. That would be confidence interval. Remember, confidence interval for the mean, it has upper boundary and lower boundary, right? So here's your upper and lower limit. It means that we don't know the actual mean age in the group, but with a likelihood of 95%, it is contained between that number and that number. No, it's not age, it's height. Okay. And then you have quantiles. Quantiles are percentiles. Anyhow, uh, and uh, right there is my distribution of, of, of all weights, right? Now, uh, I'm sure you noticed that one of these, it has this weird highlight. What is that? If I go back to my data, you will see that I have 40 rows and one of them is selected. So this selected row is highlighted. That's what's cool about giants, okay? Every time when I highlight something on the graph or in the data, they're cross-linked with each other. They're hooked up, okay? So for example, if I want to see all the records that are 14 years old, bam, I just click on, on this chart and it shows me how these records are distributed in other charts, right? Males versus females, what is the distribution of weight, what's the distribution of height, and it also highlights for me all of these things, right? If I want to see all the females, for example, and I just click on female, it highlights all the records that are female records for me, and also how they are distributed everywhere else, okay? So that's pretty much, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, uh, what else do I want to show you? Uh, let's take a look at uh, distribution and how do I, I unhighlight things it's very easy I can click anywhere in the white space unhighlight things in the charts right just like that or uh, in the in the data table if I go back to my data table some things are highlighted and you can see that there is a uh, cell kind of upper left corner cell that has this diagonal line right if I click in both uh, uh, parts of this cell it unhighlights all the records and all the columns. So I go back to my um, unhighlighted table. And also at the bottom of jump, you can see kind of a strip, right? Uh, and over there, this is the listing pretty much of all the windows that I have open. So right now I have the window that shows me the distribution, distribution of four variables, right? So if I want to bring it up, you can just double click and it comes up, okay? Now, one more time, these are the uh, univariate or bivariate distributions. Univariate, all of them, right? Why? Because each of these uh, pictures, each, each of these charts shows me one variable at a time, right? So this one shows me how the age is distributed. This one shows me how the gender is distributed, right? So I have gender go, go, goes on horizontally and vertically, I have counts or percentages, right, of counts. Here, same thing. Uh, by the way, uh, this, this is called, if, you, if you're dealing with a categorical variable being nominal, such as sex, or ordinal, such as age, how do we call these pictures? We call them bar charts, right? So if you're dealing with categorical data, that is a bar chart. So for, for the numerical data, you, you have also a bar chart, right? It's just a bunch of bars, but it has a special name for the continuous data, right? Histogram, right? So when you're plotting a univariate uh, chart for the continuous variable, you're getting a histogram. If you're plotting a univariate distribution for the categorical data, being nominal or ordinal, you're getting a bar chart. Essentially, histogram is a special case of a bar chart. So they're all bar charts, right? Histogram just has specifically designed bars, specifically designed intervals, how we slice the data, right? Okay, any questions? Is it easy to plot these things? Very easy, right? So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we still have about 12 minutes. So one thing that I'm going to show you is the graph builder, okay? So this works nice. This option in jump, when I call up the window distribution, it works really nice when I have to do one variable distribution, one at a time, okay? So univariate distributions. What if I want to plot X versus Y, such as age uh, versus, for example, height, or age versus weight, or height versus weight, right? So now I have to, uh, to do two variables at a time. Well, a couple of things that we can do in this regard. Thing number one is uh, there is another button on the top that says fit Y by X. 
Bivariate means that you're plotting one variable against another, right? So y by x seems to um, fit the occasion, pun intended, right? So fit y by x. Let's go ahead and click. And by the way, uh, you can access that from the same menu. Analyze data, right? Analyze. Fit y by x is the second from the top. So essentially, it's just, oh, my daughter went online in Skype. Look at that. OK, cool. <laughs> All right, so fit y by x. Okay, and here I have to actually, again, here is the listing of all of my possible uh, options. This is a list of my variables, right? And I have to say what's my x and what's my y. Let's say uh, we want to plot uh, weight, vertical weight versus height. What, what would be your prediction, how the plot would go? Positive correlation because as people get taller, they probably get heavier, right? You grow up, you you know, you get more height and you gain more weight. So that that should be a positive correlation of some sort. So let's let's check it out, right? So I'm going to plot height horizontally, and you can do it differently, right? You can same thing really highlight height and just say this is x, or just drag and drop. So weight, I'm going to pick it up and just drag into the y area. Okay, I'm going to play weight versus height. Simple as that. And then I click OK button, and there it is. So just like uh, Mitchell was saying, positive correlation, right? You are uh, you're getting uh, you're you're getting taller, you're getting heavier, right? So this one does it strike you this observation in any way? Well, this specific person, we can highlight and find him or her, whoever that is. Anything that you can say about that specific individual? Uh huh. Probably an outlier, right? Because on the uh, on the height side, I don't know if he looks differently from the group, but the, certainly on the weight side, he or she looks differently, right? So that's probably an outlier. Okay. So I should I should keep that in mind, and later I uh, will probably I'm going to show you how to find locate outliers and what can we do with outliers, right? Should we include them or should we exclude them? That's a judgment call. But at least we have to be able to locate outliers and then decide if we want to keep them in the data set or we want to separate the major group from, from the outliers, right? Okay, cool. So this is my uh, bivariate plot. Okay. Um, now, what I wanted to show you is how I can get a pretty much same bivariate plot in a different way, okay? So let's go ahead and close out of this and go to the menu that says graph on the top and the option, first option that you see is going to be graph builder, right? So graph builder is a tool built into jump that is specifically designed to building rich uh, charts. So it's not just limited to bar charts or scatter plots. By the way, the previous one that we constructed that I just closed is a scatter plot, right? You have a bunch of points, each one has an x, y coordinate, and it just looks like a cloud of points, right? That's a scatter plot. So you can see that on the top I have a lot of different options, okay? And let's kind of explore. Uh, what can we do? Let's, let's do the same thing, okay? Height versus weight, okay? In fact, what I will do is uh, I will now start building actually uh, very simple dashboard. Do we have time for that? We have nine minutes. Now oh, let's see. Let's see if we can get. No, can can do that in nine minutes. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. All right. So um, this is my canvas. Okay. I can drag and drop variables in different zones, and it will create different representations. So let me reproduce the same chart that I just created. Uh, height uh, horizontally versus weight vertically. So let's go ahead and take the height. And now you see that as I move it around, uh, as I hover the mouse over different zones, it highlights it in blue, right? So there are different options how I can do these things. So I'm going to drop the height in the uh, lower zone, saying that height is going to be along the horizontal axis. And look at that. Right now I have this checkbox, by default check, right? Jitter. Jitter means what? Jitter actually is, uh, you see these points? So all these 40 people that I have in my data set, they are uh, represented in this cloud of points, right? So horizontally, this one, for example, if I point 
Oh, look at that. Shows the picture. Nice. I didn't realize that. Okay, so this is Robert. His height is 51, and here's his nice picture. It looks a little girly, right? Uh, anyhow. <laughs> so, uh, and you can see that uh, each, um, each, of these, each of these points is supposed to correspond to a certain height, right? But uh, vertically, they're spread a little bit, right? They go up and down, so it looks like a cloud of points. That's jitter. It's pretty much a random effect, so that we humans, so that uh, if, if we have, for example, several points that are of the same height, okay, uh, they will not be one on the top of another, so they kind of spread them a little bit. See what happens if I uncheck the jitter? It all becomes just one line, right? So some points may be located in exactly the same place, right? So, uh, and that's more than one point. So if we introduce jitter, it kind of spreads them a little bit. It's nice visual effect, it doesn't add anything probably, well, it does some, add something, right, but not, not a lot. Okay, and now I'm going to, uh, so what was that, height, right? And now I'm going to pick up the weight and just drop it into this vertical zone, okay, that uh, uh, y uh, axis, there you go. And I'm getting essentially the same, what do I call that, by the way? Scatter plot, right? I'm getting the same scatter plot as before. Okay, and there is one observation right there, which is unusually probably heavy, right? Person, right there. And uh, what I can do though is uh, I can overimpose all kinds of uh, different options for for charting on the top of this of these dots, or I can just completely uh, completely change around how it looks. Okay, for example, let's see. If I click on that one, it keeps my scatter plot in place, right? But it also adds the smooth line. So it basically it goes, uh, goes ahead and averages out for each height. It finds the average point for, the, for this height, for all people that are of this height, and kind of plots that. And then it connects, connects them using the smooth line. If I want just a straight line, then I can go ahead and do that. Here's a straight line feed. If I want to get rid of all the points, and just do the zigzag straight line points. There it is. Okay, so I can switch between. Now oh, that that's just weird, right? Is it a good representation of this data? No, you can't tell what's going on, right? So that's probably a bad choice of uh, of uh, of the visualization. If I want to keep, so you can see that as I click through them, right? Every time when I select a new new one, it replaces the previous one, right? Well, I can actually get more than uh, one simultaneously. So if, for example, I want to keep this zigzag line, but also show the points, I can do that. How? Well, here is the point. Okay, I highlight the point. And then I'm go I, I go ahead and click on uh, that one and just drag it into the main area. Bam, okay? So when I drag and drop the image into the main area, it keeps my previous choice of graphing and add more on the top of that, okay? Questions, ladies and gentlemen? All right, now let me show you how I can uh, put more than one chart on, uh, in, in, uh, on one page, okay? That's called dashboard. So what I'm going to do is click the done button right here, okay? So that means that I'm done messing around with this thing, right? This is how the chart is supposed to look like. And also, what I'm going to do is uh, create another visualization, right? Let, let's do the distribution, actually. Let's do another chart. Let's do the distribution of the variable sex, genders, right? Males versus females. So let's go ahead and go to the good old friend distribution button, okay? Distribution button. And uh, I'm going to pick sex variable and just drop it into the Y zone and click OK. So it's going to show me my good old friend the, the chart, right? But it's looking a little bit weird, right? It's vertically oriented. Remember how I can turn it around? How? Red, red button, then what? Stack, stack. stack right? So I click on the red button and do the stacking. Okay, so I have two things open right now, two charts, right? One of them is distribution of all the height versus weight, right? It's a bivariate plot, right? And another, this is a univariate plot, right? It's one variable at a time, right? Okay. Uh, what if I want to put them simultaneously on the same uh, page so that people, whoever is using this chart, okay, they can look at the, at the distribution, at both distributions simultaneously. And they don't have to click around, right, bring one of them or another. 
uh, I can build something that's called a dashboard. So let's go ahead and uh, create a very simple dashboard. How do you do that? Well, uh, and uh, uh, another important thing. Remember I told you that at the bottom of the window you have like a strip where all the open windows are uh, located, right? So I have two of them, right? This is my distribution of gender and this is my bivariate scatter plot distribution of height versus weight. Okay, so go to the uh, file and the very first one on the top you will see is new, right? I can create new data table. That's what we did when we started the data uh, that we finished, right? Weather. Okay, uh, do you see the dashboard? Go ahead and click the dashboard, okay? And it opens up the dashboard designer for me, okay? So, you can see that I can start with blank canvas, right? Blank dashboard, or I can put two by one dashboard. So essentially it tells me, uh, like say for example, I want to put four different charts on one page, right? So what are my options? It can be two by one, or it can be three, uh, what's that, three by one plus one more, right? So uh, I have all kinds of different options. Well, I have only two, right? So let's go ahead and pick this one, two by one. And when I click that one, the template shows up for me, okay? Is everybody keeping up? Yeah. Uh-huh. How do you get to the dashboard again? How do I get to the dashboard? Yeah. Uh, so you have to go to the file, new, file new, oh, file new, and then dashboard. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put two of my things out there, right? So click. All right. And after that, what I do is basically click. So this is the list of open charts that I have, right? Right now. Distribution of gender and the weight versus height bivariate scatter plot, right? So I go ahead and click on the distribution of gender and place it right here. Or I can drag and drop, right? I can click the distribution of uh, bivariate scatter plot and just drag it into this area right there. Okay? And there it is. What's cool is it's going to be on the same. So this is design. I'm looking at the dashboard in the design. I'm still kind of. I have an option to mess around, move things, right? To arrange them. So if you want to see how the dashboard will look when you, you know, make it available to the world, you can do it from what kind of menu? Can you guess? Red triangle, right? So you see the red triangle that, uh, that's uh, right there where it says dashboard builder. Click on this red triangle and the very first option that says run dashboard. When you click the run dashboard, and maximize it, it shows you how the dashboard will look like when you send it or share it with somebody. Now, what's not cool about this dashboard, last thing I promise, okay, is uh, when I want to see the distribution of females, for example, I click on females, all right, what it does basically, it highlights for me the points corresponding to the females, right, but it doesn't tell me, maybe females have a different pattern, right, Vers uh, weight versus height than males, okay. What it does for me is it highlights the points. If I switch, it highlights all the males. If I switch to the females, it highlights all the females, but the line doesn't change, right? What I would like to do is click on the males and the line changes. It filters out all the females, right? And shows me how the line would go for the males only. And for the, for the, for the females, same thing. So we're out of time. Next class, I'm going to show you how to make things really interactive okay, on the dashboard, okay? And I will make this recording available so that you can go back and review and keep up with the class. We're done for today, and that is it.